pest control. This is Emmett. This is Juan. And we are here to give away some products. Uh, well, mostly the Typhoon uh, backpack sprayer. And we're also here to answer some questions. So you want to leave it on? Hey, guys. Emmett? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for all the entries that we have for the giveaway for the Typhoon 3. We're giving away a battery backpack sprayer today. Um, thank you so much for all the entries. We got it was like several. We have 10. We're giving, <laughs> we're giving out 10 of them, right? Nice. And um, we had about 4,000 plus entries, so we'll definitely go ahead and start giving out the winner soon. Um, but in general, we're going to go ahead and start with the questions that we normally do. We have a lot of questions that you guys also give us the ability to answer for you guys as we go live. So we'll have Walt and Juan go ahead and give you some information on the questions that we got asked. Um, as always, let me add too, please, uh, Emma, please. That, uh, Juan and I, uh, we've been in the business quite a few years and we are both licensed pest control operators. So they definitely that, know, they know what they're yeah, doing. Not they mean we know everything, <laughs> but, and what we don't know, we'll certainly uh, tell you. Definitely. So um, a little thing about the flow zone. Um, I'll let Juan discuss the flow zone a little bit before we dive into the, I really want to get that flow zone information out of the way. So sure. it's a battery backpack. It's a battery backpack backpack and um, it uh, sprays it, it, there's different tips on the on the sprayer you can shoot up to 30 feet uh, it's good for mosquito you can treat for this general pest on the exterior uh, it's, and, and it has a, a battery that lasts about three hours on a, on a full charge so yeah it's like, it's like day, yeah, yeah, yeah they, 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 they They've upgraded the Typhoon a lot. From the previous, yeah. this is the third series, but they've, they've waterized all the equipment a little bit better. It shoots a lot. It shoots up to 30 feet out. For a battery backpack to shoot out 30 feet out like that, that's a tough, you know, it provides the results yeah, you guys are looking for. Variable pressure. Too. Variable yeah. pressure as so well. You can keep it way down if you're going to do some like yeah. hand treatment around the perimeter. And, and if you're shooting up high, you can crank yeah. it up. Crank and Flowzone has a great customer support line as well, directly from them. Um, you can always have any anything that happens, any kind of maintenance that you need to do on it. You could always give them a call. Um, we do carry majority of their parts as well. So if you guys do need any kind of spare part from Flowzone, we do try to carry them. I mean, this is great for homeowners and pest control operators. I mean, point blank, this is something that both can use. If you're a homeowner, you want a commercial sprayer, this is it. Um, let's get started with some of the questions, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So uh, the first question that we have is from Lawrence in Florida. I believe it's, uh, he has a palm tree that looks like it's dying. Basically, he asked is the palm trees are displaying stress. And I have lost 75% seven, of my canopy this year. Well, all right. It could be fungus. It could be insects. It could be drought. Um, there, it's hard to tell. Uh, I, I would suggest uh, probably get a hold of a county extension agent in your area. Uh, or an arborist on there, take a look at it, uh, particularly if uh, it's a very valuable tree. We can definitely try to help out. You can send us pictures, send us images yeah. of the damage that's on the tree. Like that's the bit. We do have an info, an email that we guys give you. You can send us images. It's not just for trees or grasses. You can send us like if you have a bug or a creepy crawler crawling around the house and you don't know what it is, take that picture, send it to us. If we can identify it, we both win, right? So. Definitely send us a picture, but if there's any kind of fungal issues and stuff like that, I mean, you have options, but sending us an image so we can dictate what the issue is before we begin is a crucial part of it. So definitely send us a picture of that. If you can, Lawrence, let us get a picture of that uh, tree and we can go from there. Then we have another question from Terry out of Florida. Um, she wants to know what are pet friendly ways to treat yards? Pet friendly ways to treat yards. Well, it, it kind of depends on the pet. Uh, dogs are a little bit more um, dogs resilient cats. Dogs than, cats. Than, than cats. Uh, so <clears throat> be mindful of that. Uh, your permethrin is uh, uh, relatively safe one. Then we have uh, eco-vias. Granulars. Granulars. Yeah, yeah, granulars mm -hmm. are down into the yeah, turf. Yeah, turf. So, so instead of the grass blades, yeah. but particularly if your dog likes to uh, eat leaves and yeah. uh, which a lot of dogs do, grass blades. So you gotta be careful about that. 
Uh, you could go with the uh, eco-friendly uh, botanical, uh, green. Botanical the, green. The, the yeah. green stuff. But and even with the synthetics, I've noticed that if you follow the label, keep the dogs off of it while it's wet, when everything dries, yeah. they're all allowed to be back on the surfaces. Majority of these medications that you put on your dogs, let's take Frontline for an example, or you have Advantage, they have some of the same active ingredients that the bottles that we carry. Right, it's the same active ingredient. Of course, it's at a much lower dosage, but the active ingredients are the same. Majority of the chemicals will be pet friendly. Keep them off of it while it's wet. When everything dries, the pets are allowed to be back on the surfaces without any kind of questions or concerns. Definitely. Always, so definitely, always, they always know. Now, if you guys want a green product, that is a different concern, right? A green product is going to be dealt with differently compared to you having a. Oh, let me let me add to. There was another question I saw in there too about uh, uh, dog kennels keeping fleas. So, and and I'm assuming uh, uh, the questionnaire was asking probably about treating for fleas or ticks. Uh, you could go with a, what we call an insect uh, IGR, insect growth regulator, regulator growth which is non toxic to mammals. Uh, it's a hormone. Uh, this material right here, Pivot or something. We got Teco. Pro, uh, there's several different IGRs that do not actually kill anything except the larvae form of, uh, of an insect. Not that great on uh, ticks, so, so uh, more for the fleas and mosquitoes. And IGRs are basically chemicals that are added with insecticides. IGRs inhibit them from being able to reproduce. So that gets a good manage on the populations. You have fleas that need IGRs, mosquito control needs IGRs. Um, there are certain insects that you have to get a control on them because their populations will just explode. We can't get the kill rate as quick as they're able to reproduce. So managing the population by stopping them from reproducing is a huge component in the majority of your insect control. Where if you don't, if they're not going to reproduce and bring you, bring you offsprings, you won't have insects around your property. So you guys got to look at that too. Um, well, this might be a good one. Um, I got Michael calling out of Florida. Um, he has questions on clover mites. Clover mites. Well, they've been getting a lot of calls on clover mites this year. And, a lot. And, and now a lot of people say, well, they're inside, they're all over my window. Well, they're in their window. They, they come in, in by pure accident. And, and the way I figure it, I mean, no one knows for sure because uh, they don't tell us, but they just end up in the house. And, and you can always tell if they're clover mites by, by saying, yeah, and they'll turn kind of brownish, brownish, brownish green. Right. Well, the clover mites are feeding off some sort of foliage, uh, usually uh, grass, uh, well fertilized grass. That yeah, I find uh, moisture less, has to be. Yeah, filming. so uh, what the, you would take a, a product called, uh, well, one of the outside products, bifen or permethrin, uh -huh. and, and treat around the, the, as far out as you can. I, I mean, I, I, I tell people at least 20 feet from your house uh, and, and further if you, if you possibly can. And that stops them. Uh, this year in particular, we've had a, uh, a greater uh, demand for uh, clover control than it's been really bad. This year. this year. The calls that came yeah. in for clovers and yeah. clover mites are insane this year. It's been it's been a it's a it's a busy so, season for clover mites this year. But please give us a call on that. A treatment inside vacuum. Uh, that's you know crack and crevice vacuum cleaners and suck yeah. them up. That would be your best one. And yeah, they're trying to tap on it. The tapping, they're hitting all the tapping on the top oh, of the mic too. Sorry. sorry, guys. I've been the tapping down and cut it. But we got it. Um, oh, now, um, now, let's get to the, let's start with the first winner. Oh, you, let's start right. with the first winner, okay? That's what everybody's been waiting So, the, yeah, we kept running. <laughs> let's start with the first winner. Our first winner, okay, is going to be out of Wisconsin. His name is Daniel Blaschka. Um, Daniel Blasco, congratulations. Oh, got a close Love our Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll definitely send you guys some more. Uh, we'll get, get in contact with you soon, Daniel. But Daniel Blasco from uh, Wasua, Wisconsin, um, has won the first prayer. That's good. Okay. All right. Now, um, let's start with some more questions. Um, well, you have anything else to say? Any, any other, <laughs> anything to say about? Before we start with any questions, no, no keep, you're good. Keep, keep them rolling. rolling. Okay. Keep them rolling. Now, what is going to be the best IGR since we just discussed IGRs? All right, so Juan and I, and we're talking about that. It kind of yeah. depends on the insect. Um, uh, for German roaches, this we sell a lot of IGRs. We like a product called Teco Trio. 
and the TRIO stands for three. So you have uh, propoxifen and novoloron, which is a fast acting IGR, and hydroprene on that. Uh, and, and we have that in a liquid form. Uh, for homeowners, it's a liquid pints, probably a little bit more than you need. But we have that in a in a foam too called Teco Trio foam, which is really cool. Not, not, not only for German roaches, but it's a right. great fruit fly. You fruit can actually flies, drain it, flies. And, it, and it comes out like a shaving cream. Yeah. And with yeah, a little with a crack. I don't have a can with me, but it's got a crack and crevice tip on it. You just can shoot it right in your uh the drain. Uh right, up, right. Up, up the exact right right inside. inside. And it's really great, uh, like in a kitchen sink. Um where, where you have a disposal, you know, you have yeah. a pretty big section in there. That, and it provides that, quicker results. It does provide some quicker results because the bio drain is your, 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 your basically it's clean the drain up. Yeah, that's right. right. And so you can use the bio when drain you're using, and that together. When you're using these aerosols like the Teco Trio foam, you're inhibiting them from being able to reproduce. Again, man is the population. It's easier to kill later, yeah. right? It's all about prevention. And, and as far as German roaches, is that uh, to answer the get back to that question uh, we always want to use a growth regulator with the, the uh, baits or the chemicals that you're spraying. You you have have to to add. now if you're if you're talking about uh, uh, flea control and mosquito control outside uh, then then we go with uh, the Teco pro which, which does not have a hydroprene because you don't you really want hydroprene outside that's it breaks down. That's, yeah, 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 it breaks down. It breaks and down. it blows away. I mean, it, yeah. it also has a bit of Yeah, so uh, the Teco, Teco Pro is the same thing as Teco Trio, but we have that in small containers. Right. And, uh, and, and it's less expensive than Teco Trio. Yeah. Me personally, for pest control operators, I really try to push them for Teco Trio. You yeah. got all the free oh, IGRs yeah. inside yeah. of a bottle. So when you're a pest control operator, I'm a big fan of letting you guys, hey, Stick with the Teco Trio. You know, I mean, you have all three encompassing IGRs. It gives you all the control that you need. So definitely look yeah, into Yeah, when, when when we saw that, when it came out, we were yeah. like, Oh, you were all the way. way. Whoa, I mean, whoa. yeah. And it's the first 30 day label for German roaches. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it is. Yeah. It's exciting. It's the for us to control, control operators. So. Yeah, the residuals. Since we're kind of on the terms of IGRs, um, we have a good question on mosquito control. Um, this is from Alexis out of Maryland. What's the best product for mosquito control? That's uh, it's not. Uh, there are products, but the main you want to combine. All right, products. let me start with mosquito control. Let me start with the the core where they where they breed, and that is standing water. And and I will ask a customer: Is there any standing water? And that standard answer is no. But there probably is, and a lot of times people don't realize just just a regular drain. Um, a lot of our customers call, and they have pools, and they have drains uh, off the decking of the pool that hold water, and they're not. Yeah, I, it could be a children's toys laying around the property. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it takes a it, small it amount of water, guys. It doesn't take so much. You need to go around the property. There should be no standing water. But in terms of mosquito control, we do have kits available, right? We'll have kits available. Um, it's always a combination of products. Like we were mentioning, the IGRs are there. This stops that larvae from grabbing its wings. It dies in the water. And, of course, you have the insecticides and the synergists as well. So this strengthens the bifenthrin out if you ever wanted to go ahead and get the kit. But that's, that strengthens the bifenthrin out. You mix all three products together. It's a combination of products. Um, and you have to spray it out about once a month for mosquitoes. Gauge out the rain. The rain is your biggest battle. If you're in those rainy climates and those areas where it's heavy rain and you're in rainy climates, you really want to make sure that those shady areas, shady areas, you know, you're going to have to do retreatments. Nobody can promise you you'll never see a mosquito again. This is a mosquito reduction program. We're reducing mosquitoes. Control, yeah. control right? Reduce. You can't control your neighbors. They're tiny feathers, mosquitoes. They can blow in from your neighbors into your yard. So remember, it's more of a reduction program than it is with anything else with mosquitoes. And make sure there's no standing water, no breeding sites. Yeah, but I, and if you can find that standing water, there's a good possibility you don't have to use any insecticides at all. Yeah. Which, which goes to another. Let me. Let me. Uh, another question in mm -hmm. there was, what's the safest thing for mosquito control with uh, bees? And. Uh, <laughs> kind of the answer on that, whether you go green or insecticide, is really nothing. 
Uh, so you you're, well, you you can target the larvae. You can get a lot of stuff. And, and spray right. in the evening. You can spray when they're gone. Well, well but you know, the residual lasts a lot. Of the residual so, still so there. Usually, yes. what I, the best aspect of it is most all the flowers and everything are going to be blooming in the spring. Let's let's cool. avoid treating in, in the spring. Over, in the spring, but if you have to avoid treating the flower parts. Right. Stay away from right. the bright bulbs. Yeah. The bright yeah. flowers. They're they're efficient. These are efficient. Yeah. They zip line bulb yeah. to bulb. They don't dibble that way. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm very. Uh, uh, it's, it's an emotional thing for me on on that because I'm a beekeeper, and yeah. uh, I actually have some bees coming uh, next week, uh, being delivered. So uh, we're very careful with insecticides on honeybees. We definitely yeah. pride ourselves in that. A lot of companies do that, but we definitely pride ourselves to hey tell people. Minimize. I mean, first of all, there's no reason to spray acreage or property. Um, the only out, you only need to go about a hundred feet out, 75 to 100 feet out, because that's how far a pregnant female can smell you, and she's the only one biting you. That's the only adult mosquito that's biting you is a pregnant female that's developing an egg. So you only need to spray a hundred feet out. Don't go to the far eaves of your acreage or properties and impact all the insects there, all the bees, and all the things that we need. If you're never there, you're just end up wasting your time, your energy, and money. And of course, you're implementing all these chemicals on insects that you'll never deal with. So just go a hundred feet out in all directions and stay away from your flowering bulbs. Number one, and try to spray in the evening when all the bees kind of go back home inside of their hive. So that's how you the time of treatment. Right, it's a good way to maintain. Makes a difference, yeah. All right, guys, enough about bees. Let's do our next winner. <laughs> All right. Now we got winner number two. We got Joe. Joe, congratulations from Winthrop, Washington. You got a Flow Zone 3 coming at you. Congratulations on that. Um, we have a lot of questions on springtails. <laughs> <That's not moving. laughs> Springtails are tough, guys. I and know it's their season. To, to, we my got pest, everywhere. to my pest control operators, you probably have not uh, uh, come across this too many times. We, a lot of times, it, it's a moisture problem. Um, yes. some, sometimes it's I, not. Um, but they could be from a rain spell. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I mean, I can. Onslaught's labeled for it. There's, there's not even that many things. What about granular? Would you put demand in the soil? Like demand G granulars in the soil. If they're there. If they're there. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. Dry the dry the soil out, guys. Springtails dry the soil out. Impact the actual soil. There's a chemical called onslaught fast cap that will help help out to a degree. Make sure you do all that, but dry out the soil. You have springtails, wet soil, point blank. Dry that out. It will help. Um, now, and in terms of the best way to control ticks, well, that is a tough important question. question because uh, I was just reading the paper. We're in Georgia, and there's a, a new tick disease here. Uh, there's Lyme disease, uh, Lyme disease that's moving and uh, all throughout the east. Um, it's very important that you, you you take care of that and be mindful, uh, especially when you're out hiking, because right? yeah. you're not uh, you know you're not treating any of that, so you you don't want to be going up on hiking under bushes yeah. and stuff where right. the ticks are on the cut down the heavy brush and uh, you know keep keep maintained, and that should help cut back cut back um, on the uh, uh, as far as insecticide treatment, if you want to treat your yard because you got uh, you know, your children are out there playing, because you'd rather have them being out playing than sitting there on their phones. You know, all day. <laughs> we all we all feel that way, uh, especially as old people. <laughs> Me. Um, but uh, uh, permethrin works extremely well on tick. Permethrin is good. I mean, um, the chemical needs to be there before the season starts. If the tick lands and starts to breed, it begins. Yeah. The chemicals yeah. should be there before the season begins. The IGR needs to be put down. The yeah. and IT needs well, to be put actually, down. Well, actually, the IGR is probably not something I'd recommend. Not too on, much. On, okay. On okay. Tick control flus, okay. yes, but not, not on ticks. Okay. So much. But permethrin okay. uh, it devastates ticks. I mean, they're very susceptible to, to permethrin. permethrin. And we do carry the... I mean, there's permethrin everywhere, but uh, what we carry is the 36%, the strongest that strongest, you can yeah. get. Yeah. A lot of tick control questions we get is because the deer is coming into property. Right? Yeah. We have a lot of deer that come in to drop off the ticks. So, I mean, maintenance, I mean, you could do it once a month for ticks if you really wanted to. Um, as long as the rain doesn't wash the chemical away, it will help prevent as well. So, yeah. 
Definitely okay. keep that in mind too. Um, but third winner time, guys. <laughs> All right, let's get the right. third winner. Our third winner is going to be Alan. Um, Alan is from Wyoming, Green River. Congratulations, Alan. Great clap. <laughs> we'll get you going. Now, in terms of more questions, we have a good question about rodent control. Um, what's the best thing to control rats around IV? And the get best thing for getting rid of the IV. Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah. Cut back on your yeah. book. Anything, bushes, shrubs, and if you have like a nest that's in there, this is going to be a great location for them to build nesting in it. Um, you can maybe start with bait stations there because they may not be a proper food source available. So you could use bait stations and fill them up with the poisons and put them around the property, but cut back on your shrubs and bushes that are touching your home. If yeah, breeding sites. Yeah, there's you really want to make sure that the nesting, they don't have any reason to build nests around the house. And we're a really excellent source for uh, uh, rodent control. We, we're very experienced in this and uh and, and over the, the next several years there's going to be a lot of changes yeah in, in, in our walls and things of that nature so, about, uh, yeah so we we, we keep yeah. up with that and and uh which brings us in there was another question on birth control uh for rodents there's a, a company out of arizona that we're affiliated with that uh is producing birth control for rats not mice at this point uh, but of rats, and uh, it's looking very promising. Um, so check out our, our website on that, and we have a whole section on that. Yeah. And rodent control, guys, please be careful of rodent control. There needs to be bait stations used with any kind of poisons that we have. You can't yeah. throw these around. This is not something you got from a big box store, right? This is not something from Walmart, Lowe's, or Home Depot. Um, you went with a commercial or DIY company. This is no different than you calling Tito's mouse remover um every bait that you have to be put inside of a bait station um so definitely use bait stations and minimize so much other you don't use as much bait other third-party animals can't get to it so bait stations and baits there's you got to combine the two i mean that's how you're going to get the results that you're looking for um now and in terms of sugar ants well we have a good question on that what's the best treatment for sugar ants Products. Yeah, tell them what. Tell them what happened. The garden is good. Um, you know, kind of follow the trail and then, you know, put your little. There, I yeah. The size of a pea, right? there, there's a there's a commercial one out there. It's real popular and it really attracts them. But uh, and and uh, I don't think we may mention any names, but it happens to have a ten percent boric acid. Uh, and, it, and it's it, very uh, popular. Is it in Tyson? Is it? Is it no, no, we don't. We don't. We don't carry it. We don't carry it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Carry it. Uh, okay. Well, actually, we do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm <laughs> but we don't recommend it that much. Cause the problem is, I mean, the ants really go. The ants are, uh, they they love the stuff, but it kills them so fast that you get, get a, you get a quick reduction on on the ants for a couple weeks, and then. Uh, mama, mama ant queen. She produces a lot more than actually you can kill. So after two or three weeks, you get back to. You'll right still go into hyperdrive. Yeah. You'll push them back and think yeah, they're gone until well, she reproduces. Well, the and Avion are, are very slow. Yeah. What about different yeah. like tourist sprays on the outside? Absolutely. Tourist sprays right. on the outside because they're not yeah. getting all the resources from within the walls of your home. They're still having to venture outside to get their resources. Not so on the sprays on the outside are also very beneficial as well. But let me add to that. Almost everything's labeled for ants. And and most everything's labeled for German roaches. And, and, every, and a lot of things are labeled for bed bugs. That does not mean everything works. Right. There are certain things that we know that work. In, in our industry and uh, ants uh, for outside, we, we usually like to use fipanil or imidacloprid, non repellent non non insecticides. Uh, uh, unfortunately, they can't go uh, to every state. There are right. several states that we can't sell those in there, but uh, probably about 45 states. Majority of your yeah. states won't have yeah. any yeah. concerns yeah. with and, any and, of that. Usually when people call in the winter time, we, we have a little bit of an issue um, because the ants aren't foraging outside. No, they're so, so that's when we that's when I usually go to baits on the inside. Correct. Um, either if it's weather like now in the spring, summer, whatever, right. I, I go spraying outside because yep. I, I 
I'm about 98% sure that it's going to take care of the problem. I was going to go uh, fall back real quick. The There's sure. yeah. majority of the chemicals we carry fall into two groups, non-repellents and repellents, right? And then just, to, I want a quick discussion on that, um, repellents and non-repellents. Repellents, going off the name, highly repellent chemicals, they get in contact with it and they turn over, they turn around and die. They don't want to be around this stuff. Non-repellents, we have chemicals that are not repellent, of course, right? Non-repellent, where the chemical gets on the body of the insect. It's now on it. And if you look at insects, they tend to clean themselves frequently. They're like tiny little robots. They can't get little pieces of grain or anything in there. It messes with their exoskeleton, right? So they clean themselves frequently. So with non-repellents, when they groom themselves, clean their antennas, the bottom of their feet, they get in contact with the chemical of that and how by ingesting it and turning over. And that's what's needed for ants when you don't want bed bugs to be scattered, when you don't want your fleas to be scattered. You know, that's when you would primarily use non-repellents. So, but for all your general purpose, majority of the way, stick with the repellents for the most part. Well, let me, let me add on to that. But fleas is not going to make any difference. Uh, but, but it's mostly the German roaches, the bed bugs, and ants. Yes. Yeah. Those are the, the ones that are really uh, uh, affected by uh repellents on yep. there. They, they don't want to go anywhere near it. but that goes back to some of the products that you that are is labeled for those things and right. that doesn't mean they work it right? will i mean i'm sure they kill them but will they get rid of the issue well, it'll kill them i'm sure even if you take chloride and spray it on a roach it'll kill it and, but will they get rid of your issue and um you know, which, so. which, which might morph into um uh, bed bug control. Uh, I think there's a question. Yeah, oh, so we're we're okay. we got we got to answer these grubs. We have a, let, let's start with the fourth winner. Let's start with this. Give the fourth <laughs> winner. Now before. Bed bugs All right, the fourth winner is going to be Wendell from uh, Williamson, Georgia. Congratulations, Great. Wendell. We're gonna go, we're gonna go with that and send you uh, that typhoon now shortly. Um, now grubs. Walt, well, can you talk grubs? Grubs. Uh, they're. Uh, I know it's a. Uh, it's it's a season. You have a, a short window yeah, to treat yeah, for grubs. Yeah, yeah. In the springtime, you'd want to treat for grubs, uh, and and probably a metacorporate, uh, which is uh, a metacor. It's called a metacorporate brand. Yeah, you got to get it in the liquid form too, uh, and and doing that in the spring, and that that that's when that uh, that that stage of the larvae that they're very sensitive to insecticides. Once 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 the summer gets going, that they get older and insects, they kind of brush that insecticide off. Um, so it doesn't work as quite as well. Cool. Grubs, yeah, you have that. You have to use a granular. It can take multiple tree treatments. And one yeah. treatment may not do it, guys. I mean, grubs are deep within the soil. Yeah. Uh, this is not something that, you know, it's going to take some penetration for the chemical to get inside the soil. So the granulars, lots of rain. Don't chase it down with a hose. Your water bill is going to go up, right? So put the granular out there. Gauge out the rain to the best of your ability. Let the rain do the work. All you do is broadcast, retreat if necessary. Early spring, midsummer, anything past that? Any results you think? It's Probably tough. not. It's tough. You have that short window, guys. Follow it. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit, but flea infestation around dog kennels. Well, this is from Brian out of North Carolina. I'd go with the, IGRs. Yeah, the okay. IGRs. That would be the dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that the directions on the IGR is to keep pets off and just yeah. dry, but uh, that's a formality. Um, and, and also make sure that the dogs are treated or, or your pet is treated as well. Oh, yeah, because that can, you know, the that, IGRs won't necessarily yeah, kill the adults on right, there, exactly. but the, if you have some treatments front line or yeah, whatever, the like advantage. Yes. Um, that helps out. A lot. That stuff helps out. I mean, you really got to treat your dogs. If not, it's just going to be a never ending process. I mean, they're going to bring the fleas inside and drop the fleas off. Um, I know people don't like putting many like medications on their dogs. Do shampoos if you have to. Clean, you got to get the fleas off the dog. Point yeah. blank, if you want to have any control, try to keep any rodents away from the yard, any kind of raccoons that are, might be around the yard, they'll drop off some fleas too. Possums drop off fleas. I'm notorious for that. My, I got a possum in my backyard. <laughs> Oh, dude. And I got my four pounds of water trying to fight it. <laughs> you yeah, know? and take a trap on <laughs> Right? So. They're easy to trap. Yeah, I've heard they're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not really looking. They <laughs> say, yeah, can we go in that trap? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, powder post beetles. Powder post beetles. This is from John um, out of Indiana. Usually, one, you want it. Bortier is, is a good product for the powder post beetles. 
Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it has to penetrate the wood. So if the wood is painted or has a, a finish, or a finish or it, it'll be kind of difficult. It won't penetrate um, the grain of the wood. Yeah. There is a, uh, in, I, I think what it's called is Invicto, where you drill a hole into the wood. And you could have to do it that route. Yeah. You yeah. inject the uh, wood yeah. here. And that's yeah. usually, uh, I, I guess, probably the cross space. Uh, and, you know, it goes on moisture control, too. If you can, right. if you can get it beyond a certain uh, the moisture level in the wood, like, I don't quote me on this, but I believe it's you, you're trying to get it. Uh, the moisture content below too, 15, yeah. somewhere in the eight. So, the yeah. eight you don't want it too dry. You don't want it too dry because you'll you'll get the dry rot, and that that's not good for the wood as well. But definitely around that percentage, um, we'll keep. Powder post beetles, what preservatives are there? And remember, it's not for this generation. We're waiting on the next generation. Right. It's the eggs that will them. hatch out of there to do the gender, the damage for the next. That's what you're really betting on. Correct. It's, the, it's when the eggs come out, they're going to go ahead yeah. and try to and, grow right And one, I, I, I might be wrong on this, but I tell customers too, just because you see holes in the wood doesn't yeah, necessarily doesn't mean you got anything to worry about. Yeah. A lot of times you see frass around the hole. Right. It's frass, it's yeah, active. Yeah. It's active. Uh, but can you explain what the frass is for the frass is, pest control operators? Know right. That. A frass is uh, like a powder type uh, material that the it's powder a, it's a excrete. Yeah. It, I mean, they're, not, they're actually not eating the wood. Uh, oddly enough, they're eating the starches from the wood. Correct. Yeah. So they're the and they're kicking that that little dust out, and that's what the frass is. And, uh, is it, it would it be called is it termite excrement? Can you kind of it's not that it would termite excrement no. or anything like that? No, it's no. just the wood that they're pulling out. Yes, okay. Yeah, they okay. Have the termites actually eat the that's you know, a different thing. Yeah, they, they got you see they got uh uh little bugs in them <laughs> that actually consume the cellulose. Yes, okay. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go with our next winner. How's that? We got it wrong. How many are we giving? We got away? ten. We're giving away <laughs> ten of them. All. We're giving away ten of them. The next Sorry, one I is so. <laughs> next. <laughs> next winner is going to be Brandy from uh, Thibodeau, Louisiana. Congratulations! Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Brandy. Uh, we'll get in contact with you shortly. Um, now let's talk some grass. Um, we have. To talk, <laughs> I know we have a uh, creeping Charlie. Creeping Charlie. That's not a turf. Creeping Charlie, I'm guessing it's in Indiana. He didn't really give us the name of the grass that he said, the turf that he has. We don't know if it's fescue, Kentucky, or bluegrass, but. Actually, okay. actually I consulted with uh, Ken on this because yeah. uh, um, I've never dealt with Creeping Charlie, but uh, we have a new product called Subline, uh, which is a combination of uh, 2,4-D, the combo, and, great. and, and, and uh, triclopyr. Uh, yeah, some sort of combination on that. Uh, you would you would want to use a surfactant uh, with it. Uh, the Allegar 90 is the one that we our go to surfactant. Um, oysters, remember th- these are uh, herbicides are uh, they're time sensitive. Uh, the best I can if if it, you're in, our customer was in Louisiana that one the um, the, the backpack, if it's uh, 95 degrees down there, it's not a good time to treat. For it's going to burn the grass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You don't want to exceed 90 degree temps in terms of turf control. I mean, that's pretty much over the board. Before spring, absolutely. But one thing I tell you, we get so many turf questions, guys. we got to know what type of turf you're sitting on. Is this going to be Kentucky? Is this Bermuda? Is this Fescue? Is this St. Augustine? We have a lot of varieties in the United States of different grasses. We need to know. Hey, this is the type of turf that I have, um, so we can kind of dictate which chemical to put on the turf. Otherwise, there is a chance that we might burn it. If we don't know what type of grass you have, you know, we're, we're kind of shooting in the dark at that point. And that's where the damage is on your grasses, where you start seeing your brown spots and where you start seeing that your grass was damaged due to the fact that we didn't know what type of turf you have. So finding out the turf that you have is crucial. Um, you can take a plug out of it and go take it to a nursery. Take it from a plug way on the corner of the lawn where you won't miss it. Take it to a Pike's nursery. Don't take it to Walmart garden centers. Um, they're going to be just <laughs> as lost as you are, right? So make sure you take it to a nursery and they'll have a good, better idea of identifying your turf. So then from there, we could tell you, hey, 
Do you need atrazine? Do you need uh, sulfentrazone? Do you need triclopyr? Do you need 2,4-D? So depending upon that, and the and, and the weed itself, we can figure out. You can send us a picture of the weed, right? If there's something growing out of your fescue and you don't know what it is, but you know you're sitting on fescue lawn, take a picture of that weed and send it to us. We'll do the best we can to identify and kind of go from there and let you know, hey, you need post-emergence or pre-emergence, and you kind of go from there at that point. So you could definitely give us the information on that end for sure. But um, let's go with the next question from David out of Florida. I guess there's a lot of American roaches around the properties. Um, what do you do to control the American roaches around your yard lawn and keep them away from your house? What do you do? Uh, huh? I use granulars. Uh, Entice comes to mind. That's a good product. Uh, uh, make sure that the leaves on, on the gutters are cleaned out because they, they like that moisture. And, you know, that's how they survive is with that moisture. So anywhere around the house that you have moisture, you know, just reduce it, get rid of it if you can. Now, now for those folks that don't know what American roaches are, they're the big ones. They're the big ones. Right. And, 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 and uh, I have to feel like they, they come in by accident. And they're dead and half the time. You see a little peep of light yeah. on the door and they go yeah. in there and then they can't figure yeah. out how to get out. I, I, they don't tell us these things. But, uh, <laughs> uh, we can only uh, guess. Speculate. Uh, uh, yeah, speculate. Yeah. They typically do mess outside. Kind of like wood roaches. But a regular, wood roaches. regular liquid insecticide yeah. helps too. And, and a general. You should be able to. And, and one said in, entice. Let me explain entice is. Is a granular, but it's actually a bait. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a great product. I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, it's yeah. a green product. It's boric acid. Any areas that you can't spray or don't want to spray, bait it with Entice 10. You can even use it uh, in the attic or in the cross space yeah. if you have. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, one thing I, I learned from experience. Um, cats love it too. So it, it, it becomes in a bag. With, Best way to buy it is in a ten-pound bag. It comes in a in a bag. If you have a uh, feral cats or if you have an outside cat and you just throw it in the garage, they will rip into it. The cats will because it's it it's, it's, it's fishy, little, fishy yeah. smell. Fishy. And it's boric acid, right? So it's not yeah. like it would do much, but you want to keep them away yeah, from that stuff. They would have to eat a lot. Yeah, of yeah, food. yeah. Okay. All right, what do you have? What yeah. do you have? Now, um, the next question that we have is going to be about the. Uh, Peppermint oil. This is from Lisa out of Arkansas. Does peppermint oil really work to deter rats and mice from invading your property and vehicles? Um, I, no, no, it's no, a no, tough. It tough. On it. <laughs> I, it's it's going to be tough. They, I have no rats and mice that eat peppermint. So, <laughs> I mean, putting peppermint oil around the property is going to be a tough deterrent. That's more like a home remedy. The number one deterrent you have around your home is to make sure you seal up your entry points. They cannot be able to get inside. They should not be able to get inside. So... Well, that doesn't that doesn't help the the cars, um, mm -hmm. which, which they will get in a, a rat or mice will get into the uh, and, in and, the apartment and, and, and start, start chewing wires. It can be a very expensive uh, yes. uh, issue yeah. on there. So uh, usually in that situation, and like if it's a carport or a garage, and you do have some rodents, get yourself a, a couple, three or four bait stations, and and. And keep the yeah. uh, rodents well fed, yeah. or they they just won't have any. Right, exactly. Oh. Right. Okay, let's go with our next winner, guys. <laughs> our next winner is going to be David out of Wilton, New Hampshire. Congratulations, David. Um, we'll go ahead and get in contact with you shortly. We have two more winners, guys. We're almost done. Um, we're going to answer a few more questions. Um, let me see if we got what else we got here. Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of stink bugs? It's your season as well, well, from Deborah from Illinois. Stink bugs, they're pretty easy. They're not difficult to get rid of. Put a my say is put a repellent on this sunny side of the house. You've never had stink bugs, man. Those, those rascals are hard to get. I, they, they're resilient. They are. Well, I mean, they, are. They, they look like they got armor on them. And, uh, and, uh, so it, yeah. It's hard to penetrate any, any kind of product too, too with their... And, and usually they hit in the fall. Uh, and, and then in the springtime, just like cluster flies and just like uh, Asian beetles. We, we call all these 
occasional invaders. Okay, you and, and, it, and, and it's occasionally. It's not like you get them every year. It's one year might be worse than the other. Stink bugs tend to come from, oh, uh, a lot of times agriculture areas where you got some uh, beans and things like that grown in, in that area. Um, we have a product. I wish I, I brought it in here. It's called Striker 54. Uh, it's an aerosol. It's pyrethrin. Pyrethrin is uh, organic. It's one of the oldest insecticides known to man. Or in it, and it's grown in Africa and Australia and it's synthesized. And uh, we have that in an aerosol. Every one of our customers that are listening, look for Striker 54 on our website. It's S T R Y K E R. Unusual spelling. But it's an aerosol. Everybody should have one to kill something in your house instead of squash you don't want to squash it no stink bug it will it stink. will stink yeah uh, so you can spray it and it, it won't it won't emit yeah. that stink and i that's because yeah. i have occasionally one on there it also kills any kind of flying insect or yeah. if you see an american roach instead of you know you don't want to go mix up your your material in there just to spray this one road so you get grab that aerosol and yeah, spray that aerosol. but striker 54 is not not expensive it's um a lot of people in my neighborhood have it uh because i gave it to them so <laughs> so yeah that's a good go to quick like uh and stink bugs have seasons, yeah. right? The chemical again, it's like the seasonal yeah. thing. Prepare the surface they, they, before the season yeah. begins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You prepare prepare the surface well, before the season begins. Well, preparing the best way to prepare is exclusion. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you cough well, out and well, so well, on, yeah. I know that's easier said than done, but uh, that is uh, your best uh, alternative on that. You can't get out that flu. All right, let's start with our uh, next winner. Our next winner is going to be uh, Kara from Port St. Joe, Florida. Congratulations, Kara. Right. Floridians. Yeah. Yeah. Floridians. That... I mean, again, guys, we can't thank you enough for the entries. We had so many entries this time around. So thank you so much for taking the time to fill that form out. And we'll make sure you guys win next time. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next question that we have is um, mole crickets. Vance from Virginia wants to get rid of some mole crickets. Uh, that would be our best product would be Vithin XTS. Oh, I like that. That's <laughs> XTS. Is, talk about XTS, Walt. Like, if this is Vithin IT, guys. So there's Vithin IT, which is this, and then there's a Vithin XTS. And, and that is in a suspended formulation. Uh, uh, Bipen XTS is an uh, um, EC emulsifiable concentrate, and it 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 uh, it's excellent for penetration uh, of the soil, and actually penetration of bark on trees too. Because there's a lot of, we we use that for pine beetles and uh, some of the uh, uh, there's another question in there I, I briefly saw the the lantern fly. Uh, we'll, we'll Spotted lanternfly. Yeah, That's a good question. We should talk about those next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, we'll talk about it now too. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, because Bifen. Yeah. Bifen, Bifen XTS. I, what I don't like Bifen XTS for is as uh, verse mosquito. Even though Bifen XTS is a really high percentage, I think it's 22, 23 percentage. Whereas uh, uh, IT is 7.9. It's much higher dosage. But, but that doesn't mean it's better. Uh, it just means it penetrates, and the the, yeah. the formulation yeah. penetrates. It's oil based. Yeah. It's oil based, right? Well, it's, no, it's, it's, well it's, it's got some oil. You, you mix it, yeah. You mix it with water, and it does penetrate. It's so great. Uh, we sell a lot of it for mole crickets, crickets, and chinch bugs, mm -hmm. and then and then the the pine beetles and and uh, some of the other beetles that are attacking the trees on there. So that's where we. Mostly, mostly uh, distribute the by yeah. XTS. XTS is a great product for that too. And if you want any kind of bark penetration, or you got some, what about concrete? You think XTS is a good idea? No. Concrete, no, no. So there's some chemicals that get absorbed by concrete. Well, if, you, you if, you, usually, if you're treating concrete, because um, uh, chemicals absorb in there, I. I it's still porous. Wet, wet, wettable powder. Wettable. Yeah. Go with the powders on concrete. Yeah. And, uh, yeah okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And then I think uh, 
we ought to talk about carpenter bees. We can definitely do that. That's yeah. that was okay. There's let's get one more here. One more winner out the way. Um, we have Gary out of uh. Waller, Texas. Congratulations, Gary. Right. We're going to go ahead and get in contact with you shortly. Um, we'll have somebody get in contact with you and get that spray out. But again, it's going to be Gary from Waller, Texas. Congratulations. Um, carpenter bees. Yeah. This well, is the season. This is it. Let, let, uh, let's talk about carpenter bees a little bit. Uh, they are damaging in one aspect, and then they're beneficial and the other uh, yeah. so you know it's, it's, i'm always torn on that yeah. But the, yeah sometimes the damage is so overwhelming they'll they'll dig in there and they'll lay that queen that uh, that female uh bee will lay uh six or seven eggs Cells and, in there. and then they're pretty big larvae and they're, the, the they're woodpeckers right. will come in there and they'll, they'll go right after them yeah and they'll, and they'll, they'll they they really and they there's a delicacy but they really enjoy carpenter bee larvae if they yeah. can if they figure out there's a carpenter bee larvae on that piece of wood or inside that tree it will go crazy and and right now it. uh we're starting to we're we're in the basically the atlanta metro area and we're just now starting and and yeah. uh our our uh customers up north will start seeing them in two or three weeks probably yeah. it's it's once that female gives off the pheromones and the males yeah. get attracted and, 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 and that's what the problem is usually we we suggest spraying uh before and, 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 a, and a dust uh, first thing when you start seeing them, when you first see them, and, yes. And sometimes you have to, in that first month, have to hit multiple. Oh, yeah, I, I tell people when you see it, you just notice the issue now with these insects. The season's here. Yeah. You just happen to notice it now, yeah, right? right? I mean, when you it's see tough. these insects, the season's here. Um, we really should have put the chemical before we even saw one. Uh, we just noticed it now. When you see it, you just noticed it. It's been, I would say, the majority of the times the season's begun. You just caught it now. So, so we, we have a wonderful kit called the Carpenter Bee, Bee kit. kit. And we also, uh, uh, oddly it's enough, the, the, the bee traps work as well. They are uh, good. And yeah. uh, they, 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 it takes a little while for them to get uh, acclimated to it and get that pheromone in them. But uh, you, you, you can actually get one of the pheromones that we have. Yeah, the bee delicious or bait. You could, the bee delicious, uh, delicious bait. Yeah, yeah. Or you could take a, a carpenter bee. A, a dead one and kind of smash it along. Put it in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and, and leave that scent behind. And, yeah, yeah. It's all about getting one in there. It's, it's, kind, of like, it's kind of like a uh, disposable fly trap. Well, this is not disposable. You can reuse it. But like some of these fly traps, the more you get in there, the more will come. Yeah, yeah same thing. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. The more pheromones that are going to yeah. be yeah. around that trap, yeah. the more likely the mammals will get stuck. And they're yeah. going to, yeah. yeah. So a combination of uh, those two the, the products that you're spraying and dusting the, the dusting, dust the right. actual holes where they come and then the, the traps yeah i think all of it together it's a it's a good kit all right guys let's start with our next winner our next winner is going to be a larry congratulations mr larry is this the last one? from huntington california we got one more wall down with this so we have, I know, we have one more we have one more after that okay so this is larry wong from huntington California, we'll definitely get in contact right. with you shortly. Congratulations. Oh. And well, we have a lot of questions about gophers from our Western folks. Gophers, 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 gopher bait. If you if your state allows it. Well, California. Right, not, that's that I know restricted that. So. But gopher bait is one of the few options that you yeah. have if your state allows it. Um, it's a bait that you can apply. You have to pull the plug. They have a plug in their burrow. Pull the plug, take a long spoon. You need to get as deep inside that water you can and dump it over. Yeah. Put the plug back in. Hopefully, that should do it. And it's only sold uh, west of the. It's only certain Rockies states. Yeah, and, certain states, but not in California. They, they but that's all we have for gophers, our, unfortunately. Our, our, our California customers yeah. are really, yeah, yeah. Uh, getting uh, a lot of regulations on ro rodents and um, gophers and what have you. Now, well, uh, I had a question about from uh, Patsy. Will Flozum Typhoon get rid of German roaches? I know that's a bit of a. Come uh, on. The flo <laughs> flow zone. Um, I'm sure that if you put something, that's got kept tight. Yeah, 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 I mean, there you go. I was. I you figured I'd get that. I did. Yeah. So it was a flow zone type of. Yeah. You need to put the chemical in the flow zone for it to. The, the chemicals has to be put inside the flow zone. Yeah. 
And Juan, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm not taking a backpack in to do German road. No, absolutely. Not. You need a typical base. Bait yeah. or spray or, or, or BNG spray. I mean, or the or German roaches you're spraying in the cabinets, you're, in the drawers, under the sink. You're under on your fridge. knees, you're up on Yeah, the, you need a backpack. You, you, you don't need a backpack yeah. on yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. But to literally answer that question, I think you'd have to smash the roach with them. Yeah. <laughs> you're on the backpack. <laughs> Typhoons. I'm sure that's, I mean, sure that's a. Those typhoons are primarily going to be used outdoors. I mean, inside, I'm sure you can do some baseboard applications with your, but it's primarily going to be outdoor applications. If you're doing bushes, trees, foliage, you know, you're doing your yard for your mosquitoes, or you're doing your yard for ticks, whatever the case is. Flow zone's an option. Flow zone also makes an excellent one gallon sprayer too. You guys, flow zone is making one gallon sprayers called storms. And these storms are typical. They're, they're the same quality that Flow Zone provides with the one gallon sprayer. I mean, remember when we had the pilot come in? They got sold before it hit the ground. I mean, they came oh. in. Yeah, they came in, took that completely off our hands. Well, yeah, you guys one, did. So, like one gallon? Too? Yeah, the one gallons. Yeah. And they're swap tanks. Oh, nice. You can swap so the tank wide. out. Yeah, they're really neat. I mean, they had some, but they got completely sold out. Now we're, we're waiting for some to come in. Um, but I'm really excited about the one gallon sprayers from them. That'd be a good idea from Flow Zone is to use some of those one gallon sprayers too for your indoor needs if you need to, uh, for sure. Uh, let's get our last uh, last winner out of the way, guys. Okay, our last winner is Matthew out of Sheridan, Arkansas. Congratulations. Um, we got about five more minutes. Walt, you want to just go off the questions or kind of? Freestyle. Freestyle. <laughs> what, so what calls have you been getting lately well, from customers? Uh, a lot of clover mites. Clover mites, yeah. It's been real common. Uh, uh, I, I would like to get into a little bed bug. Uh, yeah, let's talk bed bugs. Uh, let's talk bed bugs. Uh, and uh, I uh, mentioned before, Juan and, and them, it, um, just about everything out there is labeled for bed bugs, but hardly anything works. Uh, the, the same people that make that uh, bait entice uh, Rockwell Labs out of Kansas City makes a wonderful product called uh, Symexa. Dust. You yeah, love Symexa. Yeah, -E Symexa. Symexa, yeah. And, and I'm telling you, it's, you in every, it. it's in every one of our kits. And I, I don't think our customers would have a, a chance against the bed bugs. Unless it's not that Symexa. Not that Symexa is the only thing because it's, 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 a, it's a dust. Yeah. And, and, it and slows them bugs, down. You, you have to control with uh, a number of different products. You can't just use one and say that that did it. That's what killed them. No. You have like to because uh, you have to treat certain areas. You know, like my, boy, my, my best uh, thinking on telling a customer is you put the dust where you don't want to see it. Right, it was totally in a crack and crevice. It's there for life. Uh, it's going to outlive you. Yeah. It's going to continue to work. And then areas where you would not want to put a dust, like in a in a nightstand or a drawer, or, or where you have sh shirts and stuff like that. Storing any clothing yeah. or yeah, like that. You, you don't want you powdery residual. You don't want any powdery residual. You use more than insecticides yeah. or throw things in the dryer. Um, uh, always with bed bugs too. Um, you know, most of our pest control co companies would not really want to treat without some help from the uh, customer uh, clutter management and also encasements uh, that it makes treatment yeah. a lot. Encasements are important. I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, how many times family. have you? Going yeah. through that one a lot yeah. more than I have. I know that. Absolutely. Encasements yeah. are definitely are, definitely going to be a good too. help. Yeah, encasements. Remember, guys, wash everything. I mean, and for bed bug control, there's got to be you have to declutter. You have to wash everything. Remember, there's nothing aquatic about a bed bug. I get it that the bed bug eggs may withstand water. If that's the case, dry the clothes first, wash them, and dry them again. Um, in, in the few minutes left, well, let's mention German roaches. German that, roaches. I, okay, I, I we got a lot of okay. That, that's okay. that's okay. one of the most common. Let's talk German uh, roaches. German, okay. uh, sanitation. Sanitation. Is, is very important. And then our, our best procedure, assuming the sanitation is reasonably good, is a combination of baits and growth regulators. Yes, I agree. And, yeah. and uh, it's, it's real safe to do that, and it's very effective. And if you do it right and you listen to us, uh, you there's no reason you can't get completely 
complete weeks. elimination in a month. You yeah. well, I, I say can we do it done in two weeks if there's no competing food sources? Yeah. When there's no yeah. competing food sources and the gel bait is the only thing out there for them to feed on, it will take two weeks. And in certain ways. It may do. take a little bit longer if you have an extreme infestation, yeah. right? But we really need to make sure that there's no competing food sources. You put a food source out there for the German roach in and in, in the tubes that we use, right? If there's any dog food out, cat food out, exposed trash cans at night, anything in the sink, fruits on the counter, we give them. There's too many variables at that point. Yeah, there's you know, you're food. baiting them. Don't chase after this German roach. You're not yeah, chasing let it. Let them come. We're to baiting. You. Look at the term. Let them come to you, and we can only do this when that the only food source available is what we give them, which is and, that gel. And I, I will uh, end this by saying that. I, I love to help people with German roaches because German roaches are, they're not good. They, no, they, they, they a lot of, like very quick. They, and, they, and they cause disease. a lot of illness. Yeah. yeah. Illnesses, I know. mean, if people don't understand the illnesses they can call. Uh, it's it's just because it's, it may not be something like a sickly fever that you have, yeah. but you, you'll feel it. There's, like, so. there's a lot of ro and rodents, especially mm -hmm. in, the, in the Southwest is, uh, you, you know, you've got to get rid of them. Yeah. So. And, uh, and at that, I, I guess we're concluded. Yeah. You ready to go? <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, again, we'll get in contact with all the winners one more time. Um, thank you for all your time. You guys have always been great. Um, as always, you guys know we're all here. It's the same people that you hear on the phone that do these kind of things. Um, pick up the phone. Give us a call. We'll be here for you guys. We'll get in contact with the winner soon. But um, if you have any questions or concerns, you got to name the numbers. I mean, this is over the board for everybody. Pest control operators, homeowners. I mean, we're there for you guys. So if y'all have any questions or concerns, I just log to... back in. So <laughs> it's not a big time. Thank you so much, guys. Congratulations right. to all the winners. Thank you. That's a wrap. <laughs>